Welcome, welcome, Grand Risings and Divine Greetings, beautiful kings and queens, friends and family all over the world. I am Queen Aline, and I am so honored and excited today to be sharing this sacred space and interviewing my beautiful sister, Queen Jeanette, otherwise known also as Misfit Vegan on all her socials. So Queen Jeanette is such an inspiration in my life and in the life of millions of people all over the world, sharing how she's been healing herself, losing weight, you know, taking better care of herself with living foods. So they've completely transformed her life. She's overcome depression, anxiety, different skin issues, and she's gained so much confidence um, thanks to these living foods. And today she's going to share with us how she's done it, and also give us some helpful tips and share with us some of her offerings. She um, has a coaching program. She has many different books available and um, to help us to overcome our addictions, to overcome our fears, our self-limiting beliefs and our programmings. So as you all know, I love a good heroine's journey and she definitely has a powerful heroine's journey. She's become a, an incredible leader in our community. She is also the director of the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I know a lot of our kings and queens have been, and I have heard so many incredible things about it. And I can't wait to be there too and to meet you live in person. She's also the um, founder and CEO of Fruit is Life. She has a YouTube channel, an Instagram, and a podcast where she shares and she interviews other people um, on how to they have been healing themselves naturally. So I know it hasn't always been easy for you. Um, you know, sometimes we we look at people and we say, oh my gosh, look at them. They're so vibrant. They're so healthy. They're so happy. They must have always been this way. But, you know, having struggled with depression myself, I know how dark it could feel, how lonely it could feel. And so we want to hear all about you. We know we don't want to get to know you better. Our community is eager to get to know you better. And um, tell us a little bit, you know, your journey, like where you came from, what was going on with your health um, to, you know, come to this transformation of now helping and coaching, mentoring so many of us in, in finding our own power within and, and healing naturally. This is incredible. Everything you're doing, you've been inspiring me in so many ways. And it's truly an honor to have you here today. So share with us, please, everything and anything <laughs> that, that could help our community. Wow. Thank you so much. That was amazing. That was like the nicest introduction I've ever, and so thorough. And I was like, oh my gosh, she mentioned Fruit is Life too. It's like my little fruit company. And so thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And I love that you called me a queen. So thank you. Of course. Um, <laughs> and um, yes. Yeah, so where did I come from? Yeah. I came from a standard American diet, but honestly, even worse. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and I didn't have like home cooked meals. Uh, we were doing fast food. Okay. I was, I was really taking care of myself since I could really to do that. So I was doing Chinese food and Dunkin' Donuts and fast food and pizza and bagels and the cheapest, most delicious food possible, you know? And, um, I just really ate worse than the standard American probably. And so that caught up to me at around, um, 16 years old. Okay. And so I started having really serious health problems, um, not just being overweight, but having really bad cystic acne. And when you're a teenager and you have really bad acne, if anybody watching this has, has experienced that, you know, it is so debilitating and, um, it really affects you, your self-esteem, your confidence in your life. And so I became very socially awkward. I wouldn't leave the house ever, uh, even just to get the mail I put on Mac foundation and concealer and primer and powder and all the things. And, um, not only did I have those skin issues, but I was depressed. I had chronic fatigue. I was so tired all the time. I couldn't do anything. I didn't want to do anything. And I was really, really depressed as well. And, um, all types of other random issues, bronchitis, chronic bronchitis, always getting the flu, always getting sick, always something rashes, uh, knee problems, back problems, you know, all these things that now looking back, I can't believe I dealt with all these things. Um, because now 
you know, it's been 12 years and I don't have any health issues, you know? And it's just like, oh, wow, we're not supposed to deal with these common issues. It's not normal. It's common, but it's not normal. So that's where I came from. And at the age of 26, well, at the age of 25, I went vegetarian. 26, I went raw. I never looked back um, and I never will because it is, I'm so loyal to the raw food diet because it has done so much for me and to me, my body, my mind, my spirit. And so I love connecting with people like you and other people that are watching that know the value of our health and know the value of sharing this kind of information and connecting with like-minded people. And so I'm excited to learn more about your community and um, thank you for having me. So that's yeah. my little story. Wow. That's incredible. You know, from eating Dunkin' Donuts and junk food to, to now thriving on mostly fruit. It's, it's such a transformation and also giving people hope. You know, that's what I love is that you're here to share hope and you're here to share solutions for others to, to really transform themselves too. And it's like incredible you know, we're, we're learning, I'm, I'm in this course right now, learning about regenerative health and all of the things that you're describing, all of the symptoms, you know, um, the sinus issues and pains in the joints and feeling tired, depression, acne is basically linked to the same root cause, right? It's coming from inflammation in the body. It's coming from like high acid states in the body. So if we're putting in junk into the body, like, of course, we're going to be feeling terrible. We're going to not feel vibrant we're not going to have that life force that that you have today you know we see you and we're like life force <laughs> like electric <laughs> online empowered charged up you know i could say so many things about that electricity in the body that comes from the electrical food that you're eating and we could see it we could feel it and um your true testimony to the power of living foods and so like, how did you even hear about the living foods, like coming from that lifestyle? What were you, like, did you do it on your own? Did you have any mentors? Did you read a book, see a video? Like, what was it that, that introduced you to this path? Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, I never met a vegan or a vegetarian or certainly a raw vegan in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Um, you know, so I got really lucky one day I was staying home from work because I had a very bad breakout on my eye like under my eyebrow and I couldn't even see like cystic acne really takes over your face. And I could not see like my, eye was closed. So I stayed home from work cause I was embarrassed. And also like, I couldn't even see. Um, and I was watching Oprah, the Oprah show and she had food Inc on the show. She was um, talking about this documentary and I really wanted to lose weight. I was always trying different diets. I tried every diet possible. And I was like, okay, well, I'll look at this documentary because I'm interested in health. I want to get healthy. I want to lose weight. I want to clear my acne. I don't know what to do. Maybe this will help. So I downloaded the uh, movie that night. That was the first thing I ever bought on Amazon, 2010. And I watched it and I it was divine guidance. You know, it was divine intervention because I had never seen an animal being hurt before, ever. And I saw a cow being um, hurt in the video, being pushed into the slaughterhouse and she was hurt and she couldn't walk in. She was being pushed in and she was screaming and she was crying and it got, it went right to my heart and my soul. And I like, in that moment, I knew that that was not right. That was not right. And so I didn't know what to eat. Cause like for dinner, I was going to eat chicken. <laughs> you know, I was eating animals three times a day. I was eating eggs for breakfast. I was eating like tuna or chicken for lunch. And then I was eating chicken or fish for dinner, you know, three times a day eating animals because I thought that's what you eat. That's what I was taught. You know, if I was making my food, if not, I was going out to get a burger or getting a bacon and egg or, you know, Chinese food, beef and broccoli. That was like my favorite Chinese food. So I didn't know that wasn't really food. Okay. Like, so I didn't know what I didn't know. And now I look at other people and I, I try not to judge anymore because I realized that I was once there. I didn't know what I didn't know. So I went vegetarian overnight, like in that moment, I didn't eat actually for like, um, at least a day because I didn't know what to do. I was crying. I was like, my whole world was upside down. And I remember going to work the next day. Um, and I went to the cafeteria in uh, Sony, I worked in Sony Music at the time, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to eat. You know, you can't just eat vegetables for lunch. Like, I didn't know what to eat. I was going to eat my honey mustard chicken sandwich, 
but like that wasn't on the menu anymore. So like, I didn't eat, I didn't know. So there was no Instagram back then. I don't know if there was YouTube, but I didn't have it. And so I slowly started to like get books and research and like realize that, okay, what's vegetarian, what's not. I could still eat like peanut butter and jelly. I could still eat some French, French fries, pretzels. You know, I f- started realizing all the things I could eat. And after um, a while, I was like, okay, but I want to be healthy. So I actually got a part-time job at a vegan supermarket in New York city, the only vegan supermarket. And, um, it's not in, it's not open anymore, but it was amazing place. And long story short is I met somebody there, the manager, he asked me if, uh, why am I not vegan? You know, cause I'm vegetarian for the animals, but usually people are vegan for the animals, you know, but I didn't know what vegan was. I never knew what the word meant. And so he told me to watch earthlings. And he also sent me a David Wolf video. And I watched these things and I was like, oh my God, okay, well, I'm vegan now because I did not know that I was causing fish pain. I didn't know fish had feelings. Uh, I didn't know that cow's milk is from raping cows and killing the babies. Like what? And so when I saw that and when I realized that what I was doing, I went vegan and I went raw, actually. I went raw vegan at the exact same time because he sent me the videos and David Wolf is so convincing. And I was like, okay, let's try it fuck it. I'll try this. Um, I tried it. I never looked back. Um, it's amazing. Going raw is the best thing that ever happened to me because even though it's been difficult and we can talk about the ups and downs of it, the social aspects, the family aspects, the isolating aspects of it. Um, I wouldn't change anything because I now have a new social circle. I now have a community. I now have people that are also interested in this crazy way of eating, you know, this crazy wild, fruit and vegetable diet. Um, and it has literally taken all of my health issues and they've disappeared. They've gone away. And I've also been able to feel better, look better, uh, sleep better, everything, everything has gotten better. And I would never take it back. I mean, I, I literally would never eat another way ever. It doesn't make sense to me now that I know what to eat. I'll never eat any other way. So just so you guys know, I'm raw vegan. So I eat fruit, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, mostly fruit, mostly fruit, uh, fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, big salad for dinner. Sometimes I do like a nut or seed based dressing. Sometimes I don't just depends on how I feel, but I am eating a fruit based diet 12 years now. Everything's gotten better. My teeth, my skin, my hair, all the myths are not true. I'm super healthy. My blood tests show I have high protein levels, higher than average. So all those things. Um, and, um, Yeah, that is what I'm doing. And that is what is working for me. And it's working for hundreds of thousands of maybe millions of people. We don't even know how many people there's no statistic, but um, we do know how many people are sick. Most, right? Wow. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I, I kept seeing this like, like you walking up these staircase, you know, like the stairway to heaven, just like this up level, right? It's like, let's go vegetarian. Let's let's go raw all of a sudden like you had a pretty quick um transition between the vegetarian yes. and raw vegan as soon as you went vegan you're like you had that click of well if I'm going to be this um then I'm going to do it all the way and I'm going to go all in and I think it's so important that you say that um because a lot of the times you know I'm hearing well for, <laughs> I love that you say this crazy diet because to me there's yeah. like nothing you know <laughs> I used to think it was crazy but now I'm like everything else is crazy. <laughs> this is no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Everything else is crazy. So I'm just like, uh, like people think I'm crazy because I eat fruit and vegetables. Like, okay, fine. I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's just the programming that's been there, you know? And like you said, you know, we have to have a lot of compassion for people because we've been there, you know, me too. I used to eat like the whole rack of ribs and the fried chicken and the french fries the lobster all of the things so you know I do like to mention that too sometimes because like I forget first of all and then people might not um sometimes relate to to what we're talking about because they think maybe we were never there but we were there you know and we were very addicted and very um programmed you know to, to that type of food and when we have an awakening like you did, you know, to me, it's like divine intervention, you know, 
we get seeds that are planted in our consciousness, in our in our life, presented to us. You know, uh, it could be a documentary, it could be an individual, it could be a meal. Like we all have those like aha moments in our life that really help us to awaken and to um, like flip the switch is, is what I like to say. You know, and you really had like a switch that was flipped for you because that was your calling. That was your call, your higher calling to like really have that compassion for animals really have that compassion for yourself too right because we are an animal we are part of nature so as soon as we can connect with that 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 love we have for animals um for a lot of us it really does make all the difference and we all have different avenues you know to some people it might be something different it might be you know the environmental effects it might be simply for health like like for me even though i loved animals for example i um I can't say like when I went plant-based, it was for the animals. I just couldn't go to the bathroom, you know, like I loved animals, but I was just like, I need to poop. <laughs> and like, how do I go to the bathroom? I was constipated chronically. And then my love for animals kind of grew more, you know, my connection with animals grew more. So sometimes that happens too. Um, but I love all the documentaries that you're mentioning. Definitely, if you know y'all are haven't seen it yet, like watch the documentaries, open up your mind. You know, I love Food Inc. Um, there was also What the Health that was really great, Cowspiracy, Earthlings, uh, Dominion came out recently, and also um, Game Changers too. I haven't seen, uh, no, I've seen Game Changers, but I haven't seen Dominion. But Game Changers is a really great one with super athletes. Just like you said, you know, it's like, breaking down these walls, breaking down these myths that we thought that, you know, having protein is essential for building muscles, for being healthy, like, um, or even, even this misconception that like, you know, raw vegans, you're going to be malnourished, you're going to be emaciated. People always come to me and they're like, so how do you keep your body weight up? Like, how do you do to like, not be skinny, you know, or like stuff like that? I'm just like, I don't know. I just eat a lot of fruit and you know, I exercise, like, this is my natural body, you know, this is, this is like, this is how I was made, you know, but I was overweight back in the days. So, you know, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be underweight by by being this way. And, and our bodies too, over time, um, metabolize foods differently. So there is protein in fruits, there's protein in vegetables. And the longer we are on this path, like the more we can actually absorb them because our gut gets cleaned out. A lot of the times too, is like we overeat, we overeat, we overeat. First of all, we got parasites, we got leaky gut. The system is not absorbing the food properly. So of course you're going to be hungry after that, like Big Mac and French fries. So really the solution is like cleaning out the gut and, um, you know, how, having it in a state of being able to absorb food better. So it's incredible being on this path. Um, I do want to ask uh, about family. I was watching one of your videos the other day that had me laughing. <laughs> you were talking about your godmother who mm. <laughs> was trying to put food in your mouth after you had kindly declined. You had said nicely, you said, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> but she didn't understand what it is that you're doing. and. <laughs> you know like you have to watch this video it's so real and so raw I love it and she like didn't understand and she was coming at you with the food and to put it in your mouth like how do you deal with situations like that you know a lot of people that are watching I know their families are not doing this like how do you do it to go out in social settings and um yeah and and just handle those kinds of situations Yes, that's a great question. Uh, before I answer, I wanted to say about divine interventions real quick. Um, if you if a divine intervention doesn't happen to you, then you make it happen. OK, mm -hmm. so remember with my story, guys, um, I yes, I randomly watched a documentary and I was lucky enough to do that in 2010. But then see, here's what I did to make things happen. I wanted to get more information. I was seeking more. And I was, you know, I didn't have a community like this, but I was trying, I was getting books. And then finally I was looking for a new job because where I was working, it was not a healthy environment. The music, music industry is not set up for you to be healthy. Okay. It's set up for you to have to always go out to dinner and drink socially and, you know, eat junk food, eat fast food all the time. Cause you're on the go and you're working so much. You can't, you don't have, you know, you don't have time to make healthy food. Although now I could easily work in any industry because now I know what to do. But at the time, I didn't think I had time to make food. So long story short is I applied for a job at a vegan place. 
at a vegetarian, you know, uh, supermarket. Actually, now I think they were vegetarian, and but I learned about veganism there. You see, if I had never got that job, I would have never been raw. I would have never been talking to you. So I made part of my story happen, and that's what's going to happen to you guys. You're going to be divinely guided, but you've got to take the steps. You've got to make things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, things are not always going to come to you. You're going to have to go to them. So thank you for helping me realize that because I was like, wow, I'm so lucky. But then I realized, wait, I made things happen for myself. You know, I got the information. Um, so now with my godmother, guys, if you don't know yet, yeah, so um, we just discussed, yeah, she was like trying to make me try something because like nothing in the house was vegan and it didn't matter. I brought my watermelon. I brought jackfruit. I, you know, I, I brought bananas. I brought everything I need. Like I, I know exactly what to do. It's been over a decade, you know, so nobody needs to like worry about me. But of course, when you're visiting family, they want to feed you. Food is love. Food is, you know, and family don't have boundaries. Most people don't have boundaries because they were never taught. They don't know what boundaries are. My mom didn't even know the word boundaries until I taught her. So my godmother found something in the house that was vegan. And my roommate, my best friend was with me and she was eating it. She was like, oh my God, this is so good. But see, my roommate, she's known me for like 20 years. She knows not to offer that to me. I'm not going to eat it. But my godmother, she, you know, we don't spend that much time together. So she was like, Jeanette, it's vegan. You got to try it. But it was like, oil and salt. It was a processed food, you know, it was a granola butter and it, it had crazy things in it that I would never eat, you know, oil, processed sugar, salt. And, and I'm just like, oh no, I'm okay. Thank you so much. And then she's like, no, 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 you have to try this. You're on vacation. You know, you're on vacation. You have to live a little, you're on vacation. You have to try this. And she's like trying to feed it to me. And, you know, it, back in the day, um, it would have been like, I would have started crying maybe, you know, because you're trying to fight these addictions. And I was a food addict. And that's why I work with women now that have food addictions because I'm trying to fight this. And it's like, you know, I told my family, I don't want to eat this food. I'm fighting this addiction. I can't eat this food. If I eat some, you know, sugar or salt or bread or things like this, I'm going to crave it more. And it's like back in the day, I would have felt like a victim. And I would have felt like, why are they doing this to me when I'm trying to better myself? Now I know it's not personal. You know, the four agreements is a great book. If you're trying to go raw, the former four agreements will be great for you because you're going to, you're going to have to realize that things are not about you. It's not personal. My godmother just wanted to share food with me that she thought, you know, was okay for me. And it's not a big deal. Um, Meanwhile, it is a big deal. I don't eat those things and it's part of my boundaries and we have to set our boundaries. And now, you know, that I did not give in and I literally said, I'm, I'm so sorry, this is making me uncomfortable. Can you stop? You know, like I had to say it like that and I love her so much. So it was very hard for me to say that, but I'm not willing to be mean to myself to be nice to someone else. And that's what we have to get. We have to understand that when we say yes to something we don't want to say yes to, we're being mean. We're saying no to ourselves. We're being mean to ourselves. So we have to come first. And guess what? My godmother probably doesn't even remember this incident from the weekend. We had a great weekend. It was just like, you know, it was less than a five minute incident. Um, I remember it. I'm going to remember it forever, but I'm not mad at her. I love her, but she's not even going to remember. But guess what? If I had given in, then I would have been upset with myself. I would have wanted to have more because I'm sure it's good. Processed sugar, processed oil, salt. I mean, it has all the three stimulants, the three most stimulating things on earth, sugar, salt, and oil. Um, and I would have wanted more. And then maybe I would have had more. And then maybe I would have had something else that I don't want to eat or that I, sh that I never eat. And the, it spirals. And so that's what's going on with our, we just have to make that split decision where we say, no, thank you so much. But, you know, and I tried to say I was allergic to oil. You know, that's the backup. You always say you're allergic. And usually people end it there, but you know, family, <laughs> if family, if they know you and they're like, oh, you've eaten oil your whole life, you're not allergic, you know, or you've eaten chicken your whole life, you're not allergic. But if it's a stranger, they can't really argue with being allergic. But yeah, that's what happened. And I'm glad it happened because now I could talk about it um, because it's happening in other households, you know, people that are like underweight family. I have clients that are underweight and um, they've been eating junk food and animal products their whole life they're underweight, they're trying to gain weight. And a great way to gain weight, gain weight is to go raw. Okay. A lot of people don't know this. When you start eating um, healthy foods, healthy fats, okay, lots of fruit, lots of veggies. All right. Uh, you're going to start to fix any issue that you're dealing with. So even if you need to gain weight, you can absolutely gain weight on a raw vegan diet. I've seen it before many times. And my client, her family's like trying to shove 
junk food in her face, trying to shove animal products, rice and bread and things that they think are going to help her gain weight. Meanwhile, she's been eating these things her whole life. She hasn't gained weight. So we got to try something different. And um, yeah, so thanks for bringing that up. And it's a really important topic because boundaries have to be set. If you're ever going to change what you're eating, you have to teach people what you eat and teach people how to treat you. And you have to stand up for yourself, maybe for the first time in your life. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I think this is so important, everything you're saying. And I really wanted to talk about it because one of the biggest challenge that we see, um, you know, when I ask others, you know, what's your biggest challenge in going raw vegan uh, or sticking to a juice cleanse? And one of the biggest thing is, well, first of all, emotions and then the social settings, you know, is like family, um, cooking for their children or, you know, going to different family events. And it's, it's really about standing in our power and not caring what anybody around us thinks. To me, that's like what I had to come to as well. It's like, you don't like what I'm doing. That's your problem. <laughs> but there was a long time. Uh, I come from an Egyptian background, you know, Middle Eastern, like, oh my gosh, we just want to be fed and feed others. Like, that's just what we do. <laughs> and the meat and the you know, all the all the different amazing, delicious food that I was addicted to for so many years, very traditional food. It's a very traditional um, culture, right? And it was like, how dare you give up on your tradition? How dare you give up on your culture? And I was like, I'm sick. Like, I need to do this for myself. I need to do this. And, you know, my relationship with my mother suffered a lot because she couldn't feed me. And there's that, that whole tie right there. And she's like, I'm going to need to take a step back to go and heal myself um, because the guilt, right? Sometimes they put guilt onto us or they try to put that, that guilt onto us. And I know a lot of cultures are like professional at guilt trips, <laughs> I won't name which <laughs> one, but there's that like, oh, like, don't you want to make me happy? <laughs> Like, don't you just or I made this just for you Just for you. <laughs> it's vegan. You know, like I've had people make sorry. To, I don't want to interrupt no, you, okay. but I've had, you know, one of the worst and, you know, it's been 12 years. So I have a lot of stories. But yeah. one of the worst was when I started this new job and I actually had a friend who worked in the company high up in the company. And so she knew it was my birthday. So it was like a week after I started the job. She knew it was my birthday. She had ordered these cupcakes from somewhere and they were vegan gluten-free and she ordered like a bunch you know a hundred for everybody in the company and I walk into work and like everybody surprises me they're singing happy they have all these cupcakes we put the candles in I blow the candles and then we're celebrating my birthday and they're like you got to try it it's vegan and gluten-free and we got it just for you you know and just like no I you guys I eat like I I eat raw and I told everybody, like everybody knows what I eat, you know, because anyway, it was a raw vegan juice company. So like, you know, I eat everything in the company, but I don't eat these. And she's like, no, 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 but you don't understand it's vegan and gluten-free. And it's a, like, I think it's date sweetened, you know? <laughs> okay. But I don't eat that, whatever it is, whatever is in this cup, like it don't look like a fruit or a vegetable, nut or seed. I don't eat it. I don't eat processed foods, but like, it's so hard because, you know, everybody's there and she's looking at me and we got these beautiful cupcakes. And, <laughs> but unfortunately you gotta sometimes let people down to bring yourself up mm -hmm. and it it's tough. And I'm not saying it's not going to be hard. It is going to be hard. I mean, you just talked about your relationship with your mom. Yeah. My relationship with my family, it did suffer, but you know what I was suffering. So I had to weigh it. I had to weigh it out. Do I want to just keep making everyone else happy and comfortable and hurting myself and never changing and never clearing up my acne and never taking a chance on, well, maybe this healthy thing is going to be beneficial for me long-term. We got to think about the long-term. Okay. And you know, everybody, nobody even cares anymore. Like after a few days, they're like, okay, well, she's going to eat what she's going to eat. That's fine. But if you give in, then you, then you could go down a spiral for months and, you know, years. Okay. I used to do that all the time. I used to do that. I used to be on a diet and then somebody would magically, you know, have donuts in the office and they would be free. And, you know, food is, it tastes even better when it's free. So you like, you have to eat it because it's free and it's there and it smells so good and you're hungry and you didn't have time to make a smoothie. And then you just uh, spiral out of control. And um, now I don't do that because I actually have a list. I have a list of things that I eat and I feel comfortable eating and I feel good eating. So I was so tired of feeling guilty. You know, what's funny. 
I used to feel guilty when I ate the things that I loved. And it's like, now I don't eat anything that makes me feel guilty ever, ever. So I don't think guilt should be a part of food. Okay. And like when we eat these delicious things that our family makes just for us, or like people give just to us on special, you know, holidays or birthdays. Well, if it's going to make you feel guilty, don't eat it. And your family is going to make you feel guilty. No, no, that they're, they're just trying to love you. And that's how they're showing their love. They're not trying to make you feel guilty. You're deciding whether you're going to do that or not, whether you're going to make yourself feel guilty by giving in. So now fruit, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. These are the four categories of things that I feel really comfortable with, um, that I have zero guilt, like zero. And even if it's midnight and, you know, I get home late from work or, um, well, I don't work outside the home now, but back in the day when I got home late, it's midnight. Okay. If I want a big salad, I'm going to make a big salad. Okay. It's not the most ideal time to eat, but like, I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm hungry. Even now, if I want an ice cream late at night or grapes or whatever I want, I don't care. I'm going to eat it because I feel great. And it's like, sometimes you need to, you need to eat something late at night when everybody else is eating or you're celebrating, um, you know, something. So yeah, just make sure everybody understands that guilt is not supposed to be a part of eating. It's not supposed to be where you crave something you really, really want it. And then right after it's gone, you regret it. You should never have anything in your house or on your list of things that you eat that you feel you're going to regret eating ever. That is so that. deep. And I never really thought about it in this way, but you're so right, you know? Um, and having come from like a lot of eating disorders, you know, in my, in my life, like anorexia and bulimia, you know, a lot of people have uh, criticized my current way of being saying it's orthorexia, saying yeah. it's another form of eating disorder, that I'm obsessed, that, you know, all these things. And I'm just like, I just don't want to feel bad emotionally, physically, spiritually after I eat. I don't want to have to purge after like that's my that was my cycle for many, many years where the guilt took over so much that I couldn't even keep my food down. Like I just wasn't even feeling good. And it was just like this vicious cycle of, of, of that. That was my situation. And I know I'm not alone. Um, you know, some people binge and, and don't purge. Some people binge and then they over exercise. Like there's these cycles of compensation that we could get into that. I don't feel that at all anymore being on the raw vegan um, fruitarian path at all, because I literally have, transformed my way of eating to like when I'm hungry I eat and me too like late at night I love having my durian <laughs> like soon before I go to sleep like I'll have my little you know snack or an ice cream and I don't count calories no more I was obsessed with calorie counting obsessed with what was going into my body and I don't do that anymore like I'll eat a half a watermelon no problem I'll eat like so much sugars <laughs> that everybody's so scared of and I'm really thriving like that so I love that you say that the guilt has gone away and also my love for myself has grown so much um in our first take we were talking about you were talking about co confidence and how it helped you find so much confidence so I'd like to talk about that and also um just one quick thing about the addiction piece uh, to anybody who's listening like this is so important that that you're talking about food as an addiction right I love that you uh, that you bring that up and that you know even in NA we talk about nar narcotics anonymous you know alcoholics anonymous we say one is too many and a thousand is never enough that's what we say, because we know that that first hit mm. of cocaine, crack, marijuana, alcohol, cigarettes, whatever it may be, that can bring you to your deathbed. That could bring you to the worst relapse of your life and you might not come back from it. And that is the same thing with food. And I take it very seriously too. I take my addiction to food just the same as I take my addiction to drugs and alcohol because my life depends on it. Really, my life depends on it. And I know yours too. And I know a lot of us that are, you know, in this situation, that one bite and I spiraled for um, eight months, I'll be honest, after being raw vegan for two and a half years, last August, 
I spiraled back into the cooked foods and for eight months and my, my mood wasn't as good. My depression kicked back in. I put on a lot of weight. I wasn't feeling like doing any kind of interviews, even though I had been doing them before I was on this, like I was on a roll, right? I was on this high, I was on this, this upward spiral. And then the minute I started eating cooked foods, I just went right back down <laughs> and I didn't go back to the drugs and alcohol, but I could feel those same symptoms coming back, pain during menstruation, acne coming back, sleep, you know, difficulties, like everything just came back. So now I'm back. I've been back on the fruit for 20 days now and just really recommitting to this path because it's, it's life changing and I really need to hold on and, and, and continue to connect with, with, you know, amazing, amazing leaders like yourself, um, because it can get lonely sometimes, you know, but, but, but together we can. And, you know, that's why I created Kings and Queens of Rots an online support community. And that's why you created as well, Misfit Mondays that I would love for you to talk about as well. So let's, Let's go to the confidence piece. And then I would love for you to talk to us about what Misfit Mondays is and also how, how people can uh, work with you if they are looking to overcome their addictions. I know that was a lot of oh, questions. No, <laughs> thank you so much because I was literally going to talk about it, whether you let me or not. I was <laughs> going to talk about it because what you just said about addiction. Well, Eli Martyr, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm sure you know who that is, the Free Melon Society. That's his name on YouTube. But Eli Martyr was on Misfit Mondays last night. And he literally just said, he said, um, highly stimulating things you cannot have in moderation. Like nobody can have them in moderation, whether they admit that they are food addicts or not, whether they identify as a food addict or not, you know, processed sugar, salt, and oil and highly refined carbohydrates. Okay. These things, first of all, they're not food, they're food like substances, and you cannot have these in moderation. It's not possible. And so, um, I just, I love that you, um, that you talk about food addiction as well, because, well, I mean, I thought it was my fault. You know, I thought it was my fault that I was, I couldn't control myself around certain foods, around French fries, around ice cream, candy, chocolate, uh, pizza, you know, all the foods. I thought it was me. I thought I didn't have enough willpower or discipline. I thought, you know, there's some people that can just eat one slice, but I have to eat the whole entire pizza. What is wrong with me? Well, it turns out there is nothing wrong with me and there's nothing wrong with you. If you're watching this and you can't control yourself around certain foods, that's normal. That means your body's working properly. What is wrong is that you were never taught what to eat. Just like me. It's not my mom's fault. She didn't know. She didn't know what to eat. Her, her grandma, her great grandma, you know, all these people in our lineage, they didn't know what to eat. They were duped into, you know, thinking that the food in the stores is totally normal to eat. And it's not. A lot of the food in the store should be illegal. I can't believe when I go to Walgreens and I'm buying batteries and I'm online and I see the food and, you know, I'm just curious, like what's the ingredients in these foods? Cause it's been so long. And I'm looking at like Snicker bars or Reese's pieces and the ingredients are so toxic and cause severe side effects and, you know, not so severe ones, you know, migraine headaches and IBS and skin rashes. These are common side effects from eating this, these chemicals. But then there's also the side effects of the long-term diabetes and cancers and liver issues and kidney issues, all types of issues um, from the food we are eating. This should be illegal in a normal society. So, you know, when you go raw, when you stop eating this stuff, um, you know, it's going to be a bit of a shock that, uh, that people are still eating this stuff, but you know, that's why we have communities like this. So we can feel normal. I love talking to you because I feel like you get me yeah. uh, everything you said, I can totally relate to. And I, I totally agree. And now, so the confidence aspect of um, being raw or just being healthy is really important because you're going to have to start making decisions that are not common and not like everyone else. Okay. And so I can't tell you, I wasn't very, I wasn't very confident when I started, but the more results I got, the more confident I became. And now I'm so grateful to do what I do for a living because I talk to people all the time that they don't have the confidence because they've never done it. Of course, you're not going to be confident in, in eating a raw vegan lifestyle if you've never done it before. But if you talk to somebody who's been doing it for over a decade, I have a lot of confidence in this.
it. And nobody on earth can tell me any different. Like even my best friend, sometimes she still, she know me for 20 years almost. She's still like, are you sure that's not too much food? You know, she'll see me eating, you know, 10 oranges or a big bowl of grapes or a big, big salad, big watermelon, jack, half a jackfruit or whatever. I'll eat as much as I want. And she'll say, you know, are you sure that's not too much? But like, what does she know about health? You know, she has major health issues. She's eating fast food. She's eating junk food. So how can I, I can't take somebody seriously that doesn't take their health seriously, you know, and that doesn't know the, the lifestyle. The lifestyle is very strange. It really is. You know, before I went raw, if I saw somebody eating half a watermelon, I'd be like, what in the world? They're going to get diabetes. Like what in the world is going on? So like, I'm okay with like anybody, you know, thinking anything they want about me. Cause I know I have the proof and the facts and the facts are I am healthier and happier and I feel better. And I look younger than I did when I ate what most people eat. And the other thing I really wanted to say was that, um, Oh, I lost it. It was like, um, well, I mean, I was thinking about, you know, the quantities. Oh, yes. If you're not eating enough fruit, mostly fruit, right? I wanted to say vegetables, but like vegetables are great and all, but they don't give you calories. If you're not eating enough fruit, there's no way you're going to be able to stick to a healthy vegan diet. There's just no way. There's no way. Um, so a lot of people, they just don't eat enough. And that's like the simple version of it, right? There's so much more that goes into it, which I'm sure you speak about, um, you know, like the behind the scenes stuff, like the, the things that we need to deal with that we're using food for, we're using our addictions for, you know, the loneliness or the boredom or the depression or working in a job you hate or being married to a spouse you don't like, or, you know, just all these other things that we use food to, for comfort, right? We use food to comfort ourselves. But, um, the basics is if you don't, if you're not willing to eat more than most people, you're not going to be able to do it. Like you just not, you're going to have to be okay with eating a big bowl of fruit and people saying, Oh, that looks like too much fruit or that's not, that can't be healthy. But the people that are saying that ladies and gentlemen are never healthier than you. They are never, you'll never be criticized by anyone more successful or healthier than you ever. Never. Okay. Cause like you come out to eat with me, I'm never going to be like, uh, that's too much. And I've heard this from so many people, even people that I've met at Woodstock fruit festival, I've met people. Yeah. But these are the people that keep going off and on the diet. Right. Mm -hmm. I've met people at Woodstock that, um, like we ate together and they're like, Whoa, that's a big salad. And I'm just like, you clearly are, don't know how to live this lifestyle. Cause this is an abundant lifestyle. You got to eat way bigger quantities than most people. Cause most people are eating tiny pieces of dead animal body parts that have a lot of calories, very dense things like rice and bread with lots and lots of calories. And it's very small. It's a very small plate. Um, and that's going to equal to half a watermelon, an entire half of a giant watermelon. You know what I mean? So we cannot compare. Um, I also was obsessed with calories. I was also as obsessed with um, you know, losing weight and dieting. And I also, you know, I was, I've been criticized more as a healthy raw vegan than I ever was in the past. You know, when I went raw, sorry if I'm rambling on, but this is just, this is exciting to talk to somebody who gets me. When I went raw, my family called me a fanatic. Okay. They said I was a fanatic. Yeah. I've heard that I have orthorexia. I have an eating disorder now, but I know, I know what I used to do to myself. And I know that I have healed so much because I used to punish myself with food. You know, a lot of people think that people that are overweight, they really enjoy eating. Well, actually, I really hated eating. I hated eating because I knew that once I started eating, I couldn't stop. And it was almost a punishment for me when I felt like, you know, um, when I took one bite of a donut, I was like, great, you got to keep eating now because look what you did. You ruined everything. You ruined your diet. And I would just punish myself and I would eat until I was so, so, so sick that, you know, I, I couldn't move. Okay. I would put so much food into my body. So I know that I don't have an eating disorder now. Um, people make videos about me. Uh, there's been like some haters making videos that I have an eating disorder. No, definitely not. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to have an eating disorder. That's when you eat things 
uh, to hurt yourself. That's when you eat things that are not natural. Anybody that eats an abundance of fruit and vegetables, like, come on now. In this sick society, that's an eating disorder. And meanwhile, everybody on earth that eats junk food or eats things that makes them that makes them feel bad or is guilty or sick or causes diseases, that is an eating disorder. Anything that you eat and it hurts you, mm -hmm. that is disordered eating. Mm -hmm. So it's all backwards, but you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt, right? This reality is just so crazy. So yeah. Yeah. You know, um, so the I, world is upside down. <laughs> the world is upside down. People are really, yes. really lost. People are yes. really confused. Maybe even yes. is a better word than lost. They're very confused. There's so much misguided information out there, you know, like keto yes. diet and paleo and there's like carnivore coming out too. And I mean, like, really? Are we like eating raw <laughs> meat now? Like, is this, are we, free? are we lions? Like, would you go hunt for that meat with your bare hands and sink your teeth into it? Like what's happening? You know, people are like our ancestors, our ancestors used to eat berries and they were breatharian. Like, <laughs> and they also pooped outside as well. You know what I mean? Like they did a lot of other things. They didn't brush your their teeth. They didn't barely live till 50 or yeah. less, right? So many things. And so this is why your community is so important. Okay. And that's why I started Misfit Mondays because I wanted a place where people could feel normal. Yes. And it's hard because you're living. I mean, like I don't have friends that are raw vegan, like my close friends in real life, they're not raw. So I don't really, oh, I don't feel normal. Um, I know that I'm not, and that's good because normal is sick in this society, right? Like normal one in two people will have cancer in their lifetime, in their lifetime, 75% of our society is overweight or obese. That's normal. So I don't want to be normal, but sometimes you just don't want to have to explain why you're eating 10 oranges. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to have to explain where you get your protein from, or like, if you're going to if you have blood sugar issues or like why you eat this way. So I started Misfit Mondays. It's every single Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a private Zoom link. I have a private Facebook group. If anybody's interested in joining, um, we'll leave the link below or we'll leave information below. Or you can email me, jd at misfitvegan.com. And uh, yeah, we have guests. We just had Eli Martyr on last night. He was talking about blood tests. You know, what are the dangers of getting blood tests? Does he take them? Um, all, the, all the implications of getting your blood um, tested and uh, how often you should do it. So it was really awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you for asking about that. Awesome. I love that you created a community and a safe space. I have myself seen the power of coming together with others that are doing this. And, you know, it helped me through my juice cleanse when I first did a juice cleanse. Um, and then, you know, I started this as, as same similar as, as to what you're saying, because we can feel so alone. We're like, literally these little aliens and a very, very, <laughs> these little fruity, cutie aliens. <laughs> fruity, cutie. <laughs> I just saw like a logo. That's super cute. <laughs> but thank yeah. you so much for creating this and for inviting special guest speakers too, because I think, you know, we each have a gift and we each reach people in our own special, unique way. And sometimes we need to hear it from different people. You know, yeah. we need to hear a little bit from this one and we need to hear a little bit from that one. And we need to see it from a man. We need to see it from a woman. We need to, you know, all different ages and demographics. And that's how, you know, we put the pieces of the puzzle together and we have like so much more impact in the world as well. So definitely, I want to join your Misfit Mondays. I'm definitely going to reach out to you and join and, you know, be part of your community and i hope that you could come into our kings and queens community as well we also host uh, royal gatherings and we'd love to have you on as well if you like of um, course i'd love to have you too yeah. absolutely oh my god this is amazing um i just want to read a few comments because our amazing king ken said uh, to you queen janet that you look gorgeous and abundantly healthy thank you so thank you. much that's true and thank you so much ken i appreciate that yeah thank you Ken is part of our amazing community too. And he's such a, he's such a light in our world. And he's been really supporting um, a lot of our members and on this lifestyle for many, many years, uh, 80. Mm, oh my gosh. I always forget the year. Ken, tell me in, in the eighties, he went, he went plant-based and he's been raw for like over 15 years now. So he's pretty amazing. I want to interview you. Okay. Email yes. me, Ken. I want to interview him. Oh my gosh. He's amazing. <laughs> Definitely. That'll be a great interview. And then uh, Queen April says, I'm doing it. As I'm listening to you both, I am cleaning out my kitchen. And I know she's serious because she was leaving me some voice clips before this saying she's emptying her kitchen. She's getting ready for the watermelon washout. 
that's starting tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing a 14 days on watermelon. And she says hundreds of cans of tuna fish, beans, rice, potatoes, so many unhealthy things. I am ready to go raw. Thank you so much. Yes. Wow. Donate that. Donate that. Bring it to your local homeless shelter. Just put it outside or put it in your laundry room. Don't, you know, that's what we did when my roommate, she recently became a healthy vegan. So she cleaned out a few things. We cleaned out a few things and we put it in our laundry room and it was gone, you know, very quickly. So exactly. give it away. We just got to throw it away. Like we throw away the drugs, like we throw away the alcohol, like just get it out of your sight, get it out of your field, you know, and just start filling in with all the healthy foods um, because you deserve it. And Ken says, amazing interview of two gorgeous, powerful women. Thank you so much. And 1985 is when he went plant-based. That's when I was born. No that's way. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Yes, that's amazing. Check that that's out. Amazing. amazing. Yeah, I was so proud of you, Queen April, and everybody who is here watching us. Thank you for joining. We got King Michael, who's on a juice cleanse, I think 13 days of juicing. Bobby Smith, who's lost like 100, over 130 pounds on the fruit diet. He was drinking, doing drugs, all kind of things. And we're just like such a powerful tribe now and we're getting stronger and stronger and more and more of us you know queen lachey too who's been raw vegan who's been healing herself with endometriosis we did an interview and we're all just connecting so i can plug you into a lot of our community too if you'd like to host interviews with with them like this would be so so incredible and maybe we could even do like yes i don't know like a round table or something like that um some kind of gathering and I just love all the possibilities that come from this lifestyle. And like you said, you know, I would have never met you too if I never was on this path. It's a vibration thing. It's like our vibe attracts our tribe. So when we, you know, change our own frequency, our own biochemistry, like we start to tap into so many amazing high level, high level beings and leaders in the world. I just like, sometimes I need to stop and take a step back and be like, oh my God, like, look at your friends and look at the quality of your friends around you. Look at yeah. the quality of the people around you. Yes. I had to let go. I had to let go of a fiance. I had to let go of friends. I had to let go of a lot of things. I had to move out of beautiful Belize for a while before, mm -hmm. you know, going back so I could get myself better. So I could get myself better and go back and share and teach and be a leader, you know, um, and I can't wait place. to interview you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't, we have to do this this week or next week because what, whenever you can, because like, this is what it takes. It's not easy sometimes, but you know what? It's not easy being sick either. No, it's not easy to make all these changes and stand up for yourself and move and, and change your friends and change your, your habits and change what you eat and, and all the things you might need to change your job. You might need to change your, your spouse. I don't know what's going to take, but it's going to take something but you have to understand that it's also not easy to stay the same and to just be miserable your whole life and be suffering. It's not easy to deal with health issues. So you got to choose your easy, which, you know, you're not easy. Choose your hard. Sometimes I say, but I've all, I've been trying to rephrase it because I say, choose your hard to my clients, like choose your hard. It's hard to be healthy sometimes, but it's also hard to be sick. But I want to rephrase it to say, choose your easy, because in reality, it is very easy to be healthy but it's also very easy to be unhealthy. If you think about it, it's easy to choose the pizza, the bagels, the donuts, the crap. It's easy to keep going on the same path uh, that you're on and then getting even sicker and worse and gaining more weight. But it's also, it's pretty easy to just open an orange and eat it. It's pretty easy to make a banana smoothie. You know, you don't need a fancy blender. You can buy a used blender at the Goodwill. You know what I mean? You don't need the fancy equipment. You definitely don't need a dehydrator. It's pretty easy to be healthy. Um, so choose your easy is something I like to say now. Anyway. I absolutely love that. Yes. It's like once you make that commitment, you can make it happen. You know, as long as yes. you have like a strong why and you know why you're doing this and you're motivated, you're going to make it work. You're going to make it work for yourself and you're going to bring your fruit everywhere you go. You're going to bring your juices everywhere you go and you're going to stop making excuses or living for anybody else. And definitely like it's the best way to go. I find um, just simply having fruit on me, it just makes things so much easier. And like a weight is lifted off my shoulders. You know, I don't have to think about 
what I'm going to need eat next. Like I know what I'm going to eat. I have a few choices of a few fruits and that's it. Like my life has become so much more simple actually. And the, con- the, the, the aftermath of the eating, like you were saying, is, is so important. The like, how am I going to feel after? And how is this going to affect me long-term? You know, not just like right away, but in a day, in two days, in three days, those effects um and and also something else that you mentioned too I can't remember I think it was in one of your reels um you said the foods you eat today is what you eat today is what you're going to crave tomorrow and that really hit home for me so you know I always encourage people to like eat more fruit just like if there's one thing you can do is like start your your rising meal with a fruit you know start with like starting your day with a fruit and just change that one habit and start incorporating more fruit because you're right is like that just grows, our habits grow. Well, we put our focus, that grows. So if we put our focus on the fruit, that habit is gonna grow too. So yeah, the- I mean, yeah. oh yeah, sorry. No, go ahead, go I could ahead, just go talk ahead. all day. With, I could talk to you all day about this because you get it. And it's like some people, you know, they I get a lot of questions every day. That's why I started Misfit Mondays so that like every week we can meet, I do a presentation and then you can ask me anything, mm-hmm. like anything, you know, Q&A until, you know, sometimes it's two hours, three hours, What? how long does it take? however long it takes. But I get a lot of questions like, don't you ever crave cooked food or don't you ever crave bread or whatever, right? Because like fried chicken was my favorite food. Don't you ever crave fri- fried chicken anymore? Well, there's two reasons why I don't. One is because I made it, it's not about me anymore. So if you're still craving animal body parts and their secretions, then what you need to do is you need to make it not about you. You need to watch Earthlings and Dominion over and over until it finally clicks. And it might take two times and you can't turn it off. You got to watch it straight through. You can't turn it off when it gets horrible. You got to watch it. And if you're still craving dead animal body parts, watch it again. I promise you by the second or third time, you're not going to crave those dead animal body parts. I promise you this. Okay. That's number one. So if you have someone in your life who, who really wants to go vegan, but they just like, can't have them watch this over and over and it'll work. And then the sec, so it's not about me anymore. Okay. So the cravings for fried chicken and like any animals that doesn't exist because it's, that is not food. That is a living, breathing being. And then the second thing is that, well, I take my food addiction very seriously. Okay. I was a food addict for many, many years. And so like, I don't play around with it. Like you wouldn't offer, you know, if you have a drug addiction, you wouldn't offer cocaine to somebody who's trying very bad to get off cocaine, but see food is such a socially acceptable addiction that you're going to get that you're going to, in the beginning, it's going to be difficult. Somebody's going to offer you something that you really used to love. But if you just like, like you just said, if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep choosing healthy things instead, what's going to happen is you're not going to crave that food anymore. Your body's going to help you out. Your body's on your side and your microbiome changes every single time you eat. Every single time you eat, you are changing the structure of your microbiome. And so you don't have to worry too much about the future. Just think about today, right here, right now. You got to choose the healthy food now and you're going to start craving it. I promise you, I don't want anything because I don't see it as food anymore. I don't see French fries as food. They still smell good. They still smell good. And they, I mean, they don't really look good. It's just like brown, it's tan. Like I have such beautiful food around, you know, pineapples and watermelons and jackfruits and bananas. So like, it doesn't look good to me, but it does smell good. And, you know, salt, I know it still probably tastes great. And my roommate eats French fries like all the time and I smell them and I'm like, oh, it smells great. But like, just because something smells great doesn't mean you have to eat it. I'm sure you have a candle that you've smelled and you didn't eat it, right? (laughs) I'm sure there's perfume that you didn't drink it. So like, please see these food-like substances as things that smell good and you can appreciate the smell or like a cake is so beautiful and you can appreciate that, but that doesn't mean you have to eat it because you've already tried eating it in the past and it didn't work for you. It's like, I would never eat anything anymore that didn't work for me. It's like the waffles and the chicken and the ice cream and all this stuff. I had it all. It didn't work. It tasted good for five minutes. And then I was miserable for the rest, the 23 hours and 55 minutes after. So that's it. That's the solution. You got to become aware. You got to watch the animal cruelty videos if you're trying to go vegan. And then you're going to have to eat enough fruit in order to be satisfied so that you are not starving. And then of course, if you're starving, you're going to make the wrong decisions. So you got to make sure if you're doing, you know, you guys are doing a watermelon cleanse. That's amazing. You got to eat enough watermelon. You got to eat enough 
You can't have a cup of watermelon. You got to have a whole watermelon. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to look strange to your family and it's supposed to, it's not their journey. It's not their path. Maybe one day it will be, but my family, it definitely wasn't their path. And unfortunately what happened with my family is that um, most people in my family have passed away from preventable diseases now, cancer and diabetes and strokes and heart attacks. And I was trying very hard while they were alive to get them to eat healthy. I was trying and I was succeeding slightly, but it's like people can only, you can only take them so far. They've got to make the choice. You can't force anyone to be healthy except yourself. You, that's it. You're in charge of you. So thank you very much for letting me say that. <laughs> Woo, preach. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had chills so many times when you were speaking. You are thank you powerful you are such an incredible angel here on earth like i don't say that lightly you are here as an angel for the animals for those who are ready to awaken those who are ready to change their lives like you are incredibly powerful and i love everything you're doing and, and and showing us that we can do it too you know showing us that by transforming our sacred temple that we will gain the confidence. We will gain the clarity. Everybody's saying how beautiful you look, how radiant you look, how full of life you are, because that's the truth, you know? Because, Thank you. Yes, because you're, you're feeding yourself what we're meant to be eating. So to anybody who thinks it's so strange, like the proof is in the pudding, <laughs> like, look <Yes>. at you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, it is strange before you know how to do it. And then you, when you do it, you're like, oh no, wait, I'm just eating the stuff that I'm supposed to like the stuff that's easy and fresh and delicious and beautiful, you know? And it's so much easier, guys. If anybody's watching this and they're like, oh my God, it's so much work making all this food. No, it's so, e it's so much easier because imagine making a bacon and egg uh, sandwich or imagine cutting open a watermelon. You know what I mean? Imagine making waffles, which I used to make all the time, or just peeling some oranges, Yeah. okay? putting some bananas in the, in the blender and blending it up. It's so much easier. I save so much time and like energy and just like money too. It's so much easier. I'm telling you, it's just crazy how like some people think that going raw is so difficult. It is difficult. If you make it just difficult, if you make all these gourmet raw things every single day and you got to like quit your job because all you're doing is cooking, you know, um, dehydrating things. But like I, I've used my dehydrator like five times in the last 12 years. Seriously, I make, there's one thing I like to make, okay? I don't even know how we started talking. I'm sorry, I went into a tangent. But anyway, these dragon fruit cookies, oh my God. So if you do have a dehydrator, this is like crazy. So you make, you get a, a yellow dragon fruit and you slice it like a cookie, okay? You take the skin off, you slice it. First you slice it, then you take the skin off. This will make it easier. You lay it on the sheets and you dehydrate it for like, I don't know, a few hours. It literally tastes like a chocolate chip cookie. I'm not joking. I know it's crazy, but you got to try it because those little seeds are like chips. And even my roommate loves it. And she's like, oh my God, this literally tastes like, and it's warm. So that's just the only thing I do in the dehydrator. Um, I don't, I don't have the energy or the patience to do these crazy recipes. Everything's got to be simple for me because that's how it, it makes it easy for me to succeed. You know, make it, make it easy for yourself to be raw. If you want to be raw, throw like, like what was the queen's name? That's throwing out all this crap. April. Yes. Like April. So that's genius because if it, your success is 90% your environment. Yes. Okay. Your environment. And if it's in your house, it's probably going to be in your mouth, especially when you're stressed, especially when you're just looking for something, you know, we all have those moments and for, and now she's going to have grapes washed. So that like when she needs something, she's going to have them or cucumbers or watermelon already cut up and sliced and ready to go, maybe juice, you know, make the convenient choice, the healthy choice. And that's going to really help you out. Everything is not about willpower and discipline. It's about planning and learning, being part of a community, learning what works and what doesn't work. And um, yeah, you got this. It's much easier than we think, but they're, you know, the programming and society and Weight Watchers and all these companies that are making money, they want it to seem like it's so complicated. And you got to add up points and you got to, you know, all these things. It's not. And you never have to count calories again, ever. It's so liberating. Absolutely. Yes. Everything you're saying. 
And I love that we're doing this at this particular moment. It's so interesting um, because April today is ready. And she says, you guys are saving my life. We're so happy to be here with you. And you are saving your life. You are taking that step, you know, because so many people could be receiving this information and, and not making that, that taking that action. So you are doing that, just like what Jeanette was saying, to, to take that that step you got to meet your destiny you know it's like destiny comes to you and you got to take those steps right when you feel that calling and it's hard it's so hard but it gets easier with time I do feel that once you answer the call like the answers come the teachers come to the opportunities come like I wouldn't give this lifestyle up for anything because so many doors start to open up like it's not just about a physical journey right but like this right here, to me, this is a blessing from heaven, you know, to be able to speak with you and to myself have the confidence to even have reached out to you to be like, do you want to do this with me? <laughs> like, I'm so shy. But I, I love <laughs> I love speaking to you. And like, I want to speak to you more because you get it and you've dealt with food yeah. addiction and you've dealt with this stuff and you get it. And you know that yeah, it's not always easy. There are ups and downs. And but I've realized that um, the faster I forgive myself, the faster I can get back to the life that I want and the way that I want to live and the way I want to feel and the way I want to look. You you know, in the past, it took me months, years to forgive myself for eating something I didn't want to eat. But now when my clients, when they eat something that's like not raw or whatever, okay, you ate it, great. Let's get back. The next thing we eat is going to be a fruit or vegetable. Let's get right back on it because the faster you can forgive yourself for the past, for what you just did just now, which is the past now, right? It's we're moving so fast that the moment is already gone. You got to forgive yourself because the future cannot be ruined by your past. All right. How many people are doing that are just going to just never change because they're mad at themselves because they gave up in the past, you know, and whatever happened in the past doesn't matter anymore. Leave it there leave it there. And I'm so proud of you, April. That is amazing. And yeah, you are saving yourself and so many animals too. And yeah. you're just, you're helping the planet heal because when we heal ourselves, we heal the planet. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Yes, exactly. And look at all the people that she's going to inspire too, just like oh, yes. how you're doing it. You know, like we're here to show you what's possible. We're here to inspire you, to empower you. And at the end of the day, you're going to take that step and take that action to transform yourself. And she said too, I was thinking I'm going to, I'm throwing away such so much food, the money I spent, but if you can pay 500 or a thousand dollars and be healthy and fit and free of illness and disease, wouldn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> what a great point. Yes. What a great point. What it, would it be worth to you? And I'm, and I'm talking to everybody out there, like, what would it be worth to you if you could have the body and the health and the skin and the hair and the life and the energy and the job that you really want? Like, what would that whole life be you have the confidence, you feel comfortable in your skin, you can wear whatever you want, you can go to the nude beach, okay, you can do whatever you want, like, what would that be worth to you, okay, like, that would be worth millions, that you, you would get a credit card for that, you would take out a loan for that, so you're absolutely right, and you know what, thank you for reminding me that, because sometimes, you know, it, it's still, like, sometimes I'm just like, wow, I'm spending a lot on this or that, or like, you know, my, my, uh, yoga, uh, membership, I'm a member to a yoga studio and it's like a lot of money, but like, what is it worth to me? Like getting that amazing feeling when I'm done with yoga, you know what I mean? Like I look forward to going, it's worth so much more than I'm paying. It really is. And it helps me sleep and it helps me with my, with my energy and it helps me feel good. Like yoga is my coffee. So like, imagine me like buying, coffee or yoga. It's like, it's worth millions to feel good and be happy and healthy. And you're going to pay now, or you're going to pay later, but now you're paying with money later. You pay with your life. Aye, so aye. <laughs> yeah, you end up paying for real. I didn't, I didn't mean to drop that on you, but I had to. Okay. That I had to. It's true though. We end up paying. Yeah. There's always a price to pay for our decisions we make. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like coffee, like the example is perfect, right? You could either get a natural high and natural upper from yoga that lasts and that's sustainable and positive, or you could drink coffee. And <laughs> April says, I'm going to a nude beach. <laughs> or you could drink the coffee and get that temporary high, but it's an artificial stimulant and then crash after, and then constantly need that to up, you know, to keep you up. Whereas 
you know, with yoga and raw foods, you're actually healing your body, you're healing your adrenals, you're healing your nervous system, you're like, really regulating yourself in a whole new way. So I look at it like that, like, is this a stimulant that's going to have me crash? Or is this helping me build long term health and vitality? So definitely everything you're saying is like, ooh, it's like coming into my heart. And you have such a powerful way of speaking and sharing with us. And I know a lot are being super inspired right now. Queen Star, he says, Misfit Vegan. It was such a pleasure meeting you at the Woodstock. Oh, it was such a pleasure meeting you at the Woodstock Fruit Fest in this in upstate. Yes, Queen Star was telling me about the Fruit Fest. She was sharing her pictures. She goes, love the watermelon workout. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I'm going to do it every year. Um, and uh, I only said the nude beach because I was at the nude beach this morning. And I live near a new beach and in my whole, I never in a million years thought that I would be able to go to the beach, let alone a nude beach, but it just does something to you eating healthy and feeling good in your body. It just, it changes your whole life and your whole perspective on life too. And you realize that you don't have to be perfect because nobody's perfect. And you realize that you just have to, like you become free when you have the discipline to make the decisions to choose healthy foods it leads to the freedom that you really, really want. You see, everybody thinks that like, it's such a um, chore to be raw or like, um, you know, you have to like oh, sacrifice. You want to eat the donuts, but you're going to instead eat an apple or, you know what I mean? Like oh, it's such a sacrifice. No, you're seeing it in the wrong way. It's actually freedom, eating fruit and veggies, eating delicious, amazing smoothies and smoothie bowls and salads. This is a, this is a, this is like, a gift. This is a blessing. This is what is going to set you free, not just in your mind, your body, but also your spirit. This is going to allow you to have the freedom that you really want, the body you want, the freedom to wear whatever you want, the freedom to not have to worry about your health ever. Like, I don't have to worry. Am I going to get cancer? Because my sister passed away from cancer. My mom, my grandma, my grandma, all these people had diabetes and cancer in my family. So it's like, I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I know that it is it's harsh to hear, but like the reality is, is that, yeah, all my family members have passed away from diseases that they didn't need to have because of the food they ate. So, I mean, I feel very, I feel very lucky that I got this information, but now it's my responsibility, just like everybody watching. It's our responsibility now to help other people know, wow, this is not normal. And this is not okay to eat these things, especially animal products. Okay, we are doing something we don't even know what we're doing. We're hurting the animals and we're hurting ourselves. So thank you very much for this platform to inspire someone to maybe, because I feel like everybody watching this is probably healthy, but maybe they'll be inspired to start a YouTube or to, you know, introduce somebody to a documentary or to like get out there more and stop keeping it to themselves because you are blessed with this information to be a blessing to others. So do it, <laughs> please. Thank you. I'm so sorry to hear about your family too. That must have been so hard to, you know, see them go. And also to know that, that had they chosen a different path, they didn't have to go through that path, right? It's so difficult to see those we love yeah. um, suffer in that way, you know, with, 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 with the food they eat. And it's just like, come on, like, wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm seeing some of my brothers too, like in this loop of keto. And I'm just like, I could see the signs on them. I could see, you know, different things. And mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, like, just like, come on. But, you know, it's not everybody's path, like you said, and let that be. And it has been for you, um, a catalyst for your mission, you know, a catalyst for like helping others that, that, that do want to change, that do want to awaken. And I know there's deep, deep sorrow in, in, in your journey that has propelled you, that has alchemized in you to help you become stronger too, you know, to take that pain that, that, that you had, you must've gone through with your family and want to help others, you know, with that. So, you know, we, we can only do so much for others like they have to want to they have to be willing and we can't force anybody to change you know we can't force them we can only inspire and we can only hope that that they do but if they don't then that is on them and maybe they'll you know do it in another lifetime I do believe we continue I do believe we come back to learn the lessons 
I don't ever think uh, we ever go away. We are eternal beings and we come on this planet time and time again to learn and to grow and to expand. So yeah, my heart goes out to... Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Trying your best to inspire people. It literally is the only way is for you to be as healthy as possible. Like that's the only way, like people don't care what you say. People only care about your results. Like results change, the, change the world. And so that's what I did. I just really wanted my sister. It was mainly my sister that I really wanted her to be healthy. So I was like, okay, I'm going to show that you can be healthy and you don't have to eat animals and you know, you're not going to be protein efficient and I'm going to heal all my issues and I'm going to lose weight and then I'm going to be healthy. And so again, it wasn't really about me, make it about someone else. Maybe it's about your kids or maybe it's about inspiring your mom. Your mom is suffering or your dad or your brother. And like, you're going to be the person that's going to show them the results. And then they're going to get inspired because nobody cares what you say. They care what you do and what you get, your results, okay? Results change people's opinions. So like people come to me only because I'm getting the results that they want. Like if I was still suffering from acne, there's no way that anybody's gonna come to me to help them clear their skin. It's just not gonna happen, you know what I mean? So like, that's what you gotta focus on. Everybody listening to this, you wanna inspire somebody, your kids or your family or your coworkers or your spouse, you gotta be inspiring. You got to get the results. You stick to that. You stick to putting one foot in front of the other, doing what you got to do every single day, choosing fruit for breakfast, maybe fruit for lunch, big salad for dinner, working out, working on yourself, prioritizing yourself. And guess what happens? They want some of that. When they see the results, they're going to want some of that. And that's why my roommate started eating healthier because she's just like, she's tired of dealing with health issues. And she sees that I don't have any, and I don't have to go to doctors and have x-rays and specialists and all these things. And so she's like, okay can you help me? You know, like what can, you know, what does this mean? Can I have oil? Can I have this? And, you know, I'm working with her because it's tough. It's tough. Changing, changing what you eat is harder than changing your religion. They say, so that's why you need a coach like you or me or anyone that you resonate with. A coach will help you tremendously because we made a lot of mistakes and you don't have to make those mistakes, you know? So that's why I do a course. Um, and it's a six week course. And, and so that you don't have to make those same mistakes anymore that I, that I had to deal, do with, you know, T tell us about your course because it's starting <laughs> in a few days, please tell yes. us and how we could join because there's a lot of, uh, our, you know, amazing viewers that would love to, to get some extra support. So tell us a little bit about, it's a food addiction course. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much. Uh, because right. I did want to say it is starting on Sunday, June 4th. And basically I do this course cause it's my life purpose. And every six weeks I do this. It's 10 women only. Okay. It's only for 10 women. So we already have four. So I'm looking for six more. And, um, it is for women that have had a food addiction in the past or currently and women that really, really know what to do, but they don't know how to do it. Okay. So I'm looking for women that already know what to do. They know what's the healthy food, what's not healthy. They know fruit and vegetables are really healthy. They know that veganism is like the healthiest diet on earth. The only diet that reverses heart disease and all other diseases, right? They know this, but like, they don't know how to stick to it. And so I take you on a six week journey of not just like, you know, what to do, but also how to do it. And the deeper issues underlying, because we're using food for other ish things than fuel, right? Food should be fuel. But if you're overeating, if you have, you know, if you're binging, if you have a food addiction, you're using food as your dopamine source and your estrogen source. And we got to find other ways to get that. And a big part of it is also accountability. So you're going to meet 10 other women plus me, and I'm going to hold you accountable every single day for six weeks. Okay. We're going to work out together. We're going to eat together. I'm, you're going to have my phone number. We're going to have a private WhatsApp group chat. So you have my phone number, everybody's phone number. You can call me anytime. You can text me anytime. You can text the group anytime. You can vent. You can send voicemails to vent. Um, that's been like a big thing. Uh, like we've been venting through voicemails because sometimes you just like, you need an outlet, you need support, you need cheerleaders. And uh, that's what the women in the group will be. They'll be your friends for life. And at the end of the group, you get an accountability partner for life. So I'm going to pair you with one of the women. And that's going to be your person that you talk to once a week minimum once a week, you have an hour phone call. How are you doing? How did you struggle? What can we do different next week? Did you, you know, like, did you do what you said you were going to do? Did you, um, you know, make that recipe you said, did you do that workout? You know, like somebody that's holding you accountable 
and it's outside of your immediate circle, you know, we need that. We need accountability. I need it. I've been in an accountability group for seven years now, um, almost seven years, and it's changed my life. It's the reason I have this course. It's the reason I have books. It's the reason I've been confident enough to do the, the Woodstock Fruit Festival, to have all the things that I'm doing. It's because I had accountability and I had people pushing me and making sure that, you know, I said I was going to do something and I did it. I actually did it. And um, if you're interested, I have six spots open. So you can send me an email. I'll leave the information below, but you can send an email jd at misfitvegan.com. It is only for women. I'm sorry, but like I'm a woman. So I really only know how to help women. Okay. I'm not a man. Uh, so that's why I kept it as a women's only group. Uh, and you have to fill out a application. And if if I can help you, I will let you know. If I can't help you, I will let you know as well. Hey, we're not a good fit. Okay, so there's an application and a contract and see if it's for you. And it's a really intensive six-week course. And so it's only for people that are ready, like ready. I don't want to work with anyone that isn't ready and that doesn't want to change. Like if you don't want to change, this course is not for you. It's for people that are ready and willing and they just don't know how. But guess what? You don't need to know how. You just need to be ready and willing and you need to take the first step. And then the universe helps you with the how, you know, and that, and I was so blessed to have accountability in my life. So I feel like to do this for someone else is such a blessing. And it's just like my favorite thing. I do this every six weeks, like I said, and I'm really excited for the next round. So absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh. I've always said that we needed a, a food recovery program, <laughs> just like overcoming, you know, drugs and yes. alcohol addiction. And what you're saying has is so true and has so much value. Um, also the like accountability piece to, to have mentorship, to have the support of a community and then have somebody afterwards too, to stay in touch with. That is the key right there. So anybody who's looking to overcome their addiction and they're ready to take that next step I highly encourage you to to write to Queen Jeanette I put the email in um, the comments and also we'll put it uh, everywhere okay. <laughs> so that everybody thank can, you so much can know where to find you definitely I want, is- I want to clarify real quick sorry yeah. I just yeah. want to clarify real quick two things one I was like only if you're ready well you're probably not going to feel ready because nobody's ready. You know what I mean? Like nobody's really ready. I'm not ready to do this interview. I'm so scared. You know what I mean? Like I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm not ready to do this. I'm not ready. You know, every time I do the festival, I'm not ready. Things are not ready. So like, I just want to say you're ready for change. Like meaning you need change and maybe you're not feeling hundred percent confident and you're not like sure if you can do it, that's okay. You're not supposed to be sure until you do it. Everything's hard before you know how to do it. So I'm just letting you know, you don't have to feel like, okay, I got this. No, you're supposed to, when I say ready, I mean like you need this change. Like you cannot continue going on the way you're going. And the other thing I was going to say was, mm, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say, Brightline. So we do have, there is a, I don't know if you've heard of Brightline Eating, which is an eating, uh, a food addiction recovery program. So it there we do have this. It's called Brightline, but I tried it, and I know a lot of my clients have tried it, and it doesn't really work. And here's the reason: it's an amazing program, but you're measuring your food and you're eating very small quantities. This doesn't work for food addicts. If you're a food addict, you're used to eating large quantities of food. Okay. And so this is actually making it very easy for you to transition to a raw vegan diet. This is why it works so great for me. You know, if somebody doesn't really like eating, they might not be successful on a raw vegan diet because you do need to eat a large quantity of food. And so this has worked great for me. And this is why I specifically work with women with food addictions, because to transition to a raw vegan diet where you can eat large quantities of food and lose weight and feel really good and get healthier every day because you're eating large quantities, it works literally perfectly. So if you're somebody who like, doesn't really like food, it's probably not the program for you. The raw vegan diet, it, it could work, but you're going to have to eat like avocados, you know, things with very, very dense calories. Okay. If you love eating food and you like eating large quantities, the raw food diet is literally a lifesaver and it changed my life forever. And that is what we'll be learning to do in the food addiction freedom course. So anyway, Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you. You're amazing. And let's definitely, I want to interview you and let's do something else because I love your energy. I love how you talk to your people. I love 
you know, I can tell I love your people already. They're <laughs> awesome. And so thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. We all love you too so much. I want to just go give you a big hug. <laughs> and I look forward, I'll pretend you know, <laughs> from you. <laughs> I look forward to meeting you in person and collaborating with you again mm -hmm. and having our communities intertwine and, you know, collaborate in, in so many different ways. And Queen Jeanette has on her um, uh, link tree a link if you'd like to do an interview with her. It's right there. So if anybody's feeling the call and would like to connect with her and do this as well, I encourage you. You're so much fun. You're a pleasure mm -hmm. to speak with. You're so um, passionate and committed and devoted. You have completely transformed my life in, in this time together. And in the you know few months that I've been following you too, thank you so much. You are, you're such a blessing. And we have some comments saying, somebody was saying, I'm going to watch this over and over again until I'm healed. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> so oh my gosh, so thank you. <laughs> thank yes. you so much, everyone, for being here. Blessings. And I look forward to speaking with you again very soon. Thank you to everybody who came on. We love you so much. And if you have any questions, please reach out to, to Queen Jeanette. All right. I'll see you thank soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, boo. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks.